The mark we leave. What did cavemen draw with? Can the name of a writing tool tell you what it's made of? Are modern writing tools better than the ones used in the past? The mark we leave. How writing tools tell the story of our creativity. Charcoal, the black, porous char we use for grilling and drawing, has a surprisingly murky origin story in the world of words. While the earliest known use of charcoal appears in Middle English around 1400, the exact etymology is debated. One theory suggests it might be linked to the old French word charbon for charcoal. Another theory breaks it down as charred coal from Middle English charon to turn and coal, coal. This ambiguity might stem from charcoal's long history. People likely used it well before the widespread use of mined coal. Fast forward tens of thousands of years, and cave men were already using charcoal to create their iconic cave paintings. These early artists weren't limited to charcoal, though. Ochre, a naturally occurring mineral in various colors, was also ground up and used as a paint like substance. Compared to the vast array of colors and permanents offered by modern paints, these early materials were limited. Yet, they served as powerful tools for storytelling and expression on the rough canvas of cave walls. The social and cultural significance of these paintings remains a topic of debate and fascination, offering a glimpse into the minds of our distant ancestors. Moving on to other writing tools, we can see similar threads of history woven into their names. Crayon, from the 16th century French word for chalk pencil, reflects its waxy, pigment-based nature. Chalk itself comes from the old French term linked to the Latin word for lime, hinting at its mineral composition. Pin, derived directly from the Latin word for feather quill, is a clear reference to the writing instrument it replaced. The path gets more interesting with pencil. Originally derived from the old French word for paintbrush, it shifted to refer to the small brushes used for applying graphite, then called black lead. This highlights the evolution of writing tools as technology progressed. While all these tools, charcoal, crayon, chalk, pencil, and pen, share the core function of leaving a mark, their names paint a vivid picture of their origins and the materials used. Crayon stands out for directly referencing its function, while others like charcoal hint at a debated history. From Latin roots to French influences, the etymology of these writing tools reflects the ongoing human quest for tools to create and express ourselves. This journey continues today, with pens, pencils, and even digital tools like keyboards and styluses becoming the modern extensions of our creative impulses. However, it's important to consider the environmental impact of some modern tools. Mass production of certain materials and the constant churn of new technology can create waste. As we continue to develop new writing tools, finding a balance between innovation and sustainability becomes an important consideration. YouTube.com slash Rue English The passage mentions limitations of cave painting materials. Do you think these limitations influence the artistic styles or choices of cave painters? How might the impermanence or lack of color variety have shaped their work? The etymology of pencil highlights the evolution of writing tools. Can you think of other examples where the name of a modern tool reflects an earlier version it replaced? Are there any potential drawbacks to these names persisting? The passage concludes by mentioning the environmental impact of some modern writing tools. What are some potential solutions or strategies to balance innovation in writing tools with environmental sustainability?